Let's go ahead and talk about some colligative properties. We're going to start with vapor pressure. So just as a reminder, a colligative property is a physical property of a uh, solvent that is affected by the number of particles, not necessarily what is actually being dissolved. Okay, so if we have a mole of solute particles, whether that's glucose or ions or whatever, they're going to have the same effect on the solvent, which we're going to focus mainly on water when looking at this. And so we're going to start with vapor pressure and how vapor pressure is affected when we dissolve something into water or, or a liquid. So let's say we have a container that has a liquid in it, right? And so we got a bunch of particles or molecules at the surface. And if we go ahead and seal this off, we're going to get some of those particles above that, right? And that contributes to the vapor pressure. Well, the reason why some of these particles have the ability to leave is because they have uh, an, enough kinetic energy to escape or leave or break the attractions. And we looked at this by looking at um, a kinetic energy distribution, right? So if we're at a specific temperature, it's going to look something like that. And <clears throat> we're looking at what allows a liquid uh, particle to leave is that they have enough kinetic energy to escape, so they have a kinetic energy greater, so any of these particles sitting up here. And so if we're looking at the vapor pressure, all these particles up here are contributing to the vapor pressure. Now we're just thinking about the pure liquid. Well now if we go ahead and we add in a solute, okay, and we're going to treat our solute here as this pink particle. Well we're going to have these pink particles mixed in in our bulk of our solution, we're also going to have some of these at the surface. Okay. Well, now if I have these particles sitting at the surface, these particles cannot escape, right? They are non-volatile. They don't contribute to the vapor pressure. They're not going to escape from the liquid. Because they're not going to escape from the liquid, they're not going to contribute to our vapor pressure. And so we're going to have fewer of these particles uh, that were in the liquid phase that can't escape or leave. Okay. And so if we go ahead and look at this, let's redraw this same temperature, but now just looking at the particles that would leave our solvent. And so if we redrew this, it's going to be a little bit lower. And the reason why it's going to be a little bit lower is because this is for the solvent. The rest of these particles, to fill in the rest of that curve, would be our solute particles, whatever we dissolved. And so now what we see is we have fewer particles that have an escape kinetic energy and so therefore, we're going to see fewer of these particles leave and go up into the gas phase, which means we're going to end up with a lower vapor pressure. So what we'll see is when we add a solute, the vapor pressure is going to decrease. Okay, And we can kind of mathematically express this by saying the vapor pressure of the solution that we created is equal to well, the amount of particles that can escape, right? So the greater the ratio of solvent to solute or solvent to solution, the more particles that will leave. And so we're going to use the mole fraction of our solvent times the vapor pressure of that pure solvent, okay? And so notice one thing here that's, that's very different. We're looking at the mole fraction of the solvent specifically. We typically talk about concentrations or mole fractions rel relative to what's dissolved, right, our solute. This is the one time we're going to look at the mole fraction of what is our solvent, right? Because our solvent is what's going to escape or leave. Our solute will not. So we want to know, well, what proportion will actually be present on the surface that can escape? Well, that's our mole fraction. And so this is going to give us the ability to calculate the vapor pressure created by a solution relative to the vapor pressure of the pure compound at that specific temperature. Right? And mole fractions can only be from 0 to 1. Right? So we'll see that our vapor pressure of our solution will always be less than the vapor pressure of our solvent when we add in this, what we called here, our non-volatile solute particle. Okay. 
And so we're going to follow this up by looking at some calculations, uh, an example of a solution where we're going to compare it uh, from a pure, solu pure uh, solvent to a solution and how we relate those two together. Our next one that we're going to look at is going to be boiling point. And we're going to see how vapor pressure is very, very, very much related to how the boiling point is affected for a solution versus a solvent.